What do you say to people when they ask you questions about your family after you've cut ties with them because maybe they're narcissists or toxic, but you had to make that difficult decision to cut off your whole family or certain family members for the protection of your mental and emotional health. What exactly do you say? This is something that can be really tough to answer without oversharing and going into too much detail, especially if you kind of just met this person and they're asking you questions, maybe not out of like malice or anything, but they're just genuinely curious about you. So do not worry, I've got you covered in today's video. This is part of my Ask Adriana segment that I've just started. This is the very first one I'm doing. If you would like to participate in this, feel free to join my free Telegram broadcast channel at the link in the description and you will be able to find the form to submit your question for the Ask Adriana series. Stay tuned for my tips on how to respond without getting into the whole story. Before we dive into it, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Coach Adriana and I am a fellow survivor of narcissistic abuse. I went through an entire lifetime of narcissistic abuse from my late narcissistic mother, had narcissistic exes, friends, workplaces, you name it, I dealt with it. And I suffered for four years from extreme physical chronic pain. Long story short, my physical chronic pain was a result of all of my repressed emotions and trauma from my childhood of, you know, being raised by a narcissistic mother. And so I had to make the choice to go on a deep healing journey. Within four months, I was not only pain free, but also I was healing from my whole childhood. And this is what inspired me to become a coach and help other people because I tried everything else and none of it worked. So here I am. My main goal is to help fellow survivors to heal, set boundaries and live life on their own terms. I hope this channel is helpful for you. So let's get right into this question today. This question was submitted by Katerina and she asked, I imagine that when I leave my toxic family in the future, Someone will ask, where's your family? Just a kind question. And not everyone understands that the situation, even by explaining it, I don't want to tell my long story. So how to answer without making it longer. And at the same time, I don't want to lie to someone about my situations. For example, like my parents died. I want an answer which won't make people run away from you. So I have like eight different directions where I want to go with uh, answering this. But first and foremost, you don't have to say much. It really is going to depend on the context of who this person asking you these questions is, right? If it's random coworkers, like you start a new job and people ask questions, right? About like, you know, what have you done with your life? Who are you? All that, you know, whatever. And there's a good chance that someone's going to ask you about your family and they don't necessarily mean it as like a bad thing. They don't mean it to judge you. They're really just coming from a place of genuine curiosity with what I'm going to tell you about this scenario is going to also help you figure out if somebody who's asking you this is asking you for the purpose of being judgmental and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, you don't have to say much. You don't have to get into the whole story. It is none of anybody's business what your life story is. You can't stop people from asking you questions at the end of the day. Generally speaking, decent people who are trying to connect with you will ask you questions to get to know you better because they genuinely want to get to know you better. Now, narcissists will ask you questions to get to know you better for the purpose of using any vulnerabilities or stuff that you overshare with them against you in the future because they're on a mission to destroy you. And so this is where let's just, for example, say it's a coworker at like a new workplace or whatever. And then I'll talk also about like romantic relationships as well. But let's talk about like a platonic situation or whatever first. You don't need to say a lot. Like I already said, you can just say, oh, I don't really talk to my family. Like, we have our differences. We don't really talk. And it's not something I really want to get into. But maybe in the future, I'll tell you more about it. There's no right or wrong way to answer what does your family do or like, are you close to your family, whatever, um, when you're no contact with them. There's, you know, some people lie and say their parents died because um, they're they're dead to them anyways. That's fine if that's what you want to do. But in this specific question, Katerina said that she does not want to lie to somebody about her situation, which I totally get that as well. So in that case, you can literally say like, you know, I'm not close with my family. They, you know, they have their opinions. I have my opinions. We're not really close. And I prefer not to really talk about it. A normal person 
would be like, oh, yeah, cool, no worries. Like, you don't have to talk about it. Some families are really fucked up, you know, that kind of stuff. And they'll be really cool about it. Based on that person's reaction, if they're cool about it, they're normal about it, that's a decent person because they're not pressing and like trying to get information from you. Now, if you get somebody who's like, oh, well, family is everything. Shame on you for cutting your family out of your life and whatever. That's probably a red flag, right? That's someone that they're literally demonstrating to you that this is probably not somebody you want to tell more things to because they're very judgy and they have these opinions that, you know, if your lifestyle doesn't align with their outdated opinions, um, that family is everything. And if you're not close with your family, something's obviously wrong with you. That says more about them than it does about you. They don't know your situation. They have not walked a day in your shoes. They have no idea what you have been through. And any normal person that has two brain cells to rub together can probably understand, if they have empathy, that people who stop talking to their families, they don't do that on a whim because they had nothing better to do on a random Tuesday. They're doing that because something horrible has happened in the family and it's that bad that they have chosen to separate themselves and so there are so many people who don't get it but the way i view it is that if you have empathy you're going to empathize regardless if you know something people in general i'm gonna go on a bit of a rant people in general they don't if they have empathy they don't necessarily need to have gone through every horrible terrible traumatic situation that any given human being could have possibly gone through in order to empathize with somebody. For example, there's a lot of people who have not gotten into a car accident and had their leg amputated if they were lucky to survive the accident, right? And so if someone's telling me and this is just me as just a normal person with empathy. And I'm sure if you have empathy, you could probably relate. If somebody is telling you that they went through this traumatic thing, their leg is amputated, you're not going to say like, oh, well, the doctor was wrong. Your leg's going to grow back. Like if you're just more positive, you're going to have a leg again. Like you're just being so negative and, you know, how how could you have agreed to that? You know what I mean, right? You're going to empathize and be like, holy shit, that's terrible. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. That must have been so traumatic. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, right? And so people don't have to have gone through that to empathize with that person who went through that. And in my opinion, I believe it is the same for people who have been through horrible emotional trauma where, you know, you're telling your horrifying story of what happened and this person's still judging you and not empathizing with you, that's not somebody that you need in your life, right? And so this is why when you're meeting new people, it's always best to not say too much because you don't need to say too much. And if somebody is kind of demanding that they want you to say a lot about yourself, that's a red flag. And why do they need all of this personal information from you, right? That's going to show you exactly what type of person this is. Now let's talk about this in like a dating scenario. Like if you start dating somebody new and they ask you about your family, which would be like a pretty standard thing to ask. Um, and I'm just going to preface this with like there's so many people with these outdated beliefs. There's so many people who will say and, you know, I have been out of the dating game for over a decade at this point. Um, you know, I, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll share that too, just to say like that I'm proof that like you can find a normal person. I've been happily married to my husband for over seven years now. Holy cow. And, um, I dated all narcissists pretty much before, before meeting him. Um, so my dating advice could be kind of outdated, but let's just humor the topic. All right. So, there are people out there who will say, and it's kind of like this well-known societal fact, that if somebody is not close to their family or their parents, that's a red flag about that person. And now people are welcome to believe that. But just because people believe that, it doesn't mean that it's true. And if someone is so committed to this belief that if someone's not close to their family, something's wrong with that person then that's their problem and that's their beliefs. And there's nothing that you can do to change somebody's mind, right? And everybody's an adult and people need to kind of figure out that 
People have different things that happen in their lives just because they have a great relationship with their family and everything's like the Brady Bunch and all honky dory. They sort of assume that, you know, someone who they're going to consider as like a partner or a spouse or life partner, whatever, is going to have a very close relationship with their family because that's just the way that we do things. And that's just how we figure out if someone's a great person, um, you know. They've got like probably a few reality checks coming for them. Good luck to them. Good riddance, right? If someone's like so committed to that belief that you need to have a good relationship with your family, otherwise like we can't, we can't date. That's, you probably dodged a bullet. You know what I mean? And there's people who are well-meaning who have these beliefs, but at the end of the day, are you dating or marrying the person's whole family or the person themselves, right? Like a lot of the times like families get so involved in people's marriages and to me that's more of a red flag that there's narcs in those families to be totally honest. Um, and so you're probably dodging a bullet by staying away from people who like require you to be close to your family in order to be worthy of dating them. Fuck that, you know? Um, like with the acquaintance or coworker type scenario, they're going to be okay if they're normal, if they're worth dating, if they're worth having in your life. They're going to, you can literally give the exact same sort of response. Like, I'm not close with my family. We've had our differences and it it, it just is what it is. And I'd rather not talk about it. Somebody that you're dating in like the early stages, I, I would hope this is not something that like is talked about on the first date. Cause I feel like the first date should just be like really fun and like carefree. You don't get into like these deep topics. Um, but it is definitely probably a question that would come up if things start progressing and there's, you know, two dates, three dates, et cetera. And like, it's going to keep going. It's just a normal thing that someone would ask. And again, this is another way that you could filter people that you're dating by how they react to your answer to that question. Trust is built over time. You know what I mean? So if someone, again, is requiring that you trust them enough to, you know, bear your soul to them and give them all this information about your life at like the early stages, like you've just met that is a red flag. Narcissists want to gain your trust as soon as possible because then they create that closeness, they create the trauma bond, and then they get to create the shit show and continue that cycle of abuse by getting all this information from you and then exploiting it afterwards when it's convenient for them to pick a fight and all that kind of stuff. So if you are worried, like I'm just going to sum this all up, that if you're worried that whatever answer you give to any given person, whether it's, you know, a friend, a coworker, an acquaintance, a romantic relationship, and they're going to run away from you based on your answer, let them run let them go let them do what they think they need to do you can't force people to accept you um you know it would be great in an ideal world that we just all accept each other with our differences but some people are just so committed to not having certain differences that that causes them to run and that's on them at the end of the day yeah this is probably going to narrow down the number of people that you have in your life but it's always quality over quantity, right? You want quality connections in your life, not as many connections as possible because you have a fear of being lonely. And if that's the case, you need to do some inner work because there's a lot of healing that can happen in solitude, which is a chosen state of, you know, you're doing stuff for yourself. Um, and it doesn't mean you're like going on a month long silent meditation retreat or something like that. It really just means you're you're choosing to do some activities by yourself and enjoying your own company. Because at the end of the day, if you're surrounded by people who are on a mission to destroy you or you're surrounded by people who are just judging you, right? Like, if you're not with me, you're against me. And so if you're dealing with people who are not with you and they're against you, you're going to be lonely anyways. And that loneliness is going to feel worse than the loneliness you would feel by just genuinely not having that many people in your life that you're close with but that doesn't mean that you're not going to have people in your life in the future so i hope this makes sense and again if people are going to run away based on your answer that says everything about them and nothing about you they are super judgy they are you know unwilling to expand their view of the world and that's their problem at the end of the day and that's not somebody that you really want to be close with 
right? So that's it for today's video. I hope this was helpful. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like this video. And if you want to participate in this Ask Adriana series, I invite you to join my free Telegram broadcast channel and you'll find the link to submit your question inside the broadcast channel. You can also follow me on social media at Let's Get Your Shift Together. And if you want to work with me, check out the link in the description. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, and I also will mention that I just launched a brand new community membership for survivors of narcissistic abuse. We have monthly events, there are audio courses and so much great stuff and you can get started for less than $1 per day. Check out the link in the description below and join now so you don't miss out on the rest of the October events and you'll be right in time for the November ones. See you next time.